Welcome to another edition of Yes, We're Here, Meredith Morakovitz alongside Tino Martinez. Tino, let's go back into history and revisit some of the great moments you've had throughout your baseball career. What is one thing that stands out to you, just off the top? Uh, a lot. I mean, uh, individually, obviously, you know, the Grand Slam in the World Series, the home runs in the World Series, that type of stuff. But the real thing that really stood out first and foremost was um, Charlie Hayes catching that the pop-up for our first World Series win. That really was like something you dream of as a kid. You dream of getting to the big leagues. You dream of having a great career there. But to play in the World Series and to win it is, is something you never think would happen. And when he caught that ball, it was all – everything just hit you at one time. Like, this really happened? Are you kidding me? And then you just start the party. In. But that was a great moment. He's running there. He's getting under it. Yeah. How many times after that did you guys reenact that for him? Oh, man. I mean, every time we see him, and they, they play it all the time. And – uh, I think they've actually done it at one of the old timers games where Charlie was at third base there and somebody hit a pop up over there and when the fans were in the stands. So he, he ran over there and caught it and the fans knew what was going on and they all just started cheering again for that moment. So it was kind of cool. Well, it's funny. You were on the other side in 1995, as we know. That was an unbelievable ALDS and you certainly did damage against the Yankees. What was it like walking in that clubhouse the very next year? And did you have any idea at the time that you could be in store for the type of run that you guys went on? No, I had no idea. But I do remember that series. We started the first two games in, in New York at Yankee Stadium, the old stadium. And that's been the first time the Yankees had gotten to the playoffs in a long time. And the atmosphere there was the loudest I've ever heard that stadium or any stadium in baseball. The first two games there with the, the walk-off home runs, they hit late innings and all that stuff. The atmosphere was electric. And um, to go back to, to Seattle and wind up winning that series, which was a great series. I had to watch a game the other day on TV and had it on. Uh, it was a great, great moment, a great series and whatnot. But I never thought I'd even be traded from the Seattle Mariners. And when I got traded, uh, I just thought, man, I can't believe that uh, this team, which is such a great team, I'm, I'm playing for these guys now with Paul O'Neill and Bernie Williams, and, you know, Andy Pettit and up and coming Mariano and Derek. Uh, I knew we had a great chance to win, to be a good team, but I didn't know how good we'd be. You mentioned Derek, you were on first base when he got his first hit in 1995. What did you say to him? Do you remember that conversation at all? I, I didn't know him at all. I didn't know him. I just say, hey, congratulations, man. I have many more to come, hopefully. That's all I said. I'll never forget that. He remembers that too. And, and, and who'd have thought, you know, 3,000 plus more would have been coming after that. You mentioned the Grand Slam in the World Series in 1998 in game one against San Diego. Do you remember every second of stepping into the batter's box in that at bat today? Yeah, I do. I do, yeah. The thing is, in those situations, uh, um, you know, it was already our second World Series and all that, but we know when the, the guy in front of me, I think walked whatever it was, so I'm coming up there with, with a, a two outs, whatever it was, and bases loaded. It was a tie game. But I remember the fans just going crazy. They announced your name. They just they're going wild. And, and the, the weird thing is, and people say this, they don't understand it, that when you're up there at the plate, you really stop hearing them for a little bit. You just like watch the pitcher and focus on the ball and ball one or strike one, whatever it is. And um, – Everybody talks about the uh, two and two pitch. It was kind of close right there at the knees. And, you know, I, I thought it was low. And, it was, you know, as well as the knees, it kind of like could have been a ball or a strike. Uh, and the, I heard the crowd go, ooh, whatever it was, and all that. But other than that, when you're, when you're, when you're in that three and two count, the, the ball's coming, you hit it. And then when I hit the grand slam, it was like, oh, my God. You hear all the eruptions. Like, all of a sudden, the volume went turned on. Like, the mute button got was off, and now the, turn, the volume came on, like, real loud. I was like, wow, what an experience. And running around the bases was like, uh, it was surreal. I was like half dizzy, like, wow, this is unbelievable. It's in a grand slam in the World Series. I was going to say, does it even feel real or does it almost feel like a euphoric experience as you're going through it? Totally euphoric. I mean, you run the bases and you see the people going crazy, the beer flying, uh, and then, then it hits you. I was like, hey, grand slam in the World Series. You give us the lead here. You know, now I think we got to hold this lead and, and win the game to make it really count. Uh, but you know, it hit home plate there, and then the standing, the curtain call. Uh, was amazing, and then you go back on the field for defense, they're still roaring and still going crazy. So it, it was a great experience. Is there anything that replaces that, that crowd noise? No. Or will you remember that forever? I'll remember that forever, 100%. I think, I think most people remember the guys I played with and the teams we played against in those World Series games in New York, the old stadium. All of those teams will remember that experience, whether they won or lost. Hey, you had a big one in 2001 as well. Take me through that one. Yeah, so um, basically we had never seen – we never played the Arizona Diamondbacks uh, that year in interleague play or at all at that point. And uh, Kim, the right-hander reliever, the sidearm reliever, none of us had ever faced him. So in the eighth inning, uh, I, I think maybe the um, 
six hitters up, six, seven, eight hitter. Uh, I went in the locker room. You know, back then we have like the video room they have now. The locker room, our TV had the game on. So I just watched him pitch to the first three hitters. He, got, he went one, two, three. And he threw a fastball right down the middle to every one of them because they'd never seen him before. You know, and then he was a slider, slider, slider. And the inning went one, two, three. And then I went back down there again. The city was over, came back in tonight. And first hitter, first pitch, first pitch fastball right there. And so I said, if I get a chance to hit, I'm looking for a first pitch fastball, and I'm going to hit it hard because most guys were taking from him because they never had faced him. So when I got up there, I looked for a first pitch fastball. I got it, and I hit it hard. And it was like a hard, long line drive to, to right center, and I wasn't sure if it was going, going out or not. And Finley was going back to get it, and when it went over the fence so to, to tie the game, uh, again, that was a, a loud stadium. Uh, I mean, Paul O'Neill was jumping around. He was on, on first base at the time, and at home plate, he almost killed me with a high five, and uh, it was awesome. Now, we were talking a little bit about the World Series. You, of course, won four with the Yankees. Of those World Series, which had the best post-game celebration <laughs> after well, the win? Give me some of the dirt, Tino. <laughs> I was, it's not really dirt. It's just fun. We had we actually had um, a family member had rented out the, the, the Oak Room at the Plaza Hotel. That was, that was, I'm sorry, that was in, 19, that was in 1999. The 1999 uh, Plaza Hotel, and we had this huge bash there where all the front office came, uh, families came, and we were there until about 7.30 in the morning. And I remember going back home. I lived in New Jersey at the time, and obviously in a cab. Went back in a cab to, to the house in New Jersey. The front yard, they had to pick up a newspaper, went in the house, went to bed until about, you know, 2 o'clock in the afternoon and, and had a great time. But that was a good party. I'm sure it was. Uh, one last one before I let you go here. More nerve-wracking playing in the World Series or giving a speech after they told you that your plaque would be in Monument Park. Oh, man, giving a speech. Oh, that's the hardest part. Uh, when, when I remember getting that call from the, the front office saying they were going to you know, give me a plaque on June 14th or whatever, and I'm going, first of all, I was shocked. I'm like, wow, what, a, you know, what an honor and stuff. And it, was, it blew my mind. And then from that point on, this was like months earlier, like three months earlier, and every single day and night, every, I kept thinking, what can I say? What am I going to say? What am I? And it just drove me nuts. So that was tough, but exciting.